there, my name's Kelly, the Embroidery Nerd. I'm going to talk to you today about stabilization. Stabilizers are the key to machine embroidery, to making sure that your products stay on the machine while you're stitching, and also that they will look good as a finished product when you're giving them to your friends, family, or customers. So we're going to first jump straight into different types of stabilizers and why you would use them. So let's get straight into the different stabilizers that I think are most important to have in your shop for different projects that you might be working on in the future. So one that I use a lot because I do a lot of children's clothing is a no-show poly mesh. And this is a cutaway stabilizer that I think is key to have on board. You'll hear a lot of people say, if you wear it, don't tear it. And what that refers to is using a cutaway on clothing items because they are going to be laundered over and over and over. And these are items that you're going to want to have continued stabilization throughout the course of their wear. So I can show you right here. This is a shirt that I just finished. This is actually the no-show poly mesh on the back. And what I'll do once I'm done is I will cut a little bit closer to our design here. And I'll, the, the stabilization will actually remain with this shirt when we're done. The reason this is nice, especially for items that are possibly on a white shirt, is this is a very light stabilizer. And then you will not be able to see the stabilizer through those light colored items. Now I know this is black, but it's just a good example of something that I've just completed and just wanted to show you how that stabilizer is used. It comes in a lot of different sizes. It actually comes in a lot of different thicknesses as well. The no-show poly mesh is what I tend to use. And there is a product from Sulky that's called Soft and Sheer. And that's the one I tend to use most often. I like the, the weight of it because again, like I said, some of them will vary in their thickness. And also for me, I don't like to be able to see them through the white shirts that I make. And so it's a very sheer, like, it, like the name implies, Soft and Sheer. So you cannot see it once you're done and a child's wearing it. So it's a very, very, very popular item that I really think you want to have in your shop for a lot of the projects that you'll be working on, especially if you do clothing. Now, my second most used item is a tearaway. And another thing to kind of show you is there are so many different ways that you can purchase different stabilizers that really function the same. So if you look at these, both of these are tearaway, and I think I have even a small version of it. And then you guys, this is also tearaway right here. So there's lots of different ways that you can buy the exact same stabilizer or type of stabilizer, and there's different uses you might use them off. If you just need a small piece, then this is a great option, just a small square that you could use. Or if you need to do a ginormous project, this is a 20 inch roll of tearaway. I use the large rolls when I have to do something that's in a large hoop. Like for instance, doing a shower curtain. This would be great for that. Or one I use often is a 12 inch roll and that seems to cover a lot of the different hoops that I use. Another version that I use a lot are these pre-cut sheets. Now pre-cut sheets, a lot of different companies provide these. You do pay a little bit more for the pre-cut sheets, but man oh man, can it be so handy and nice to not have to cut your items. Literally just have them already pre-cut for you and grab them as you need them. You actually have to buy these a little bit larger than the hoop that you're using. So these, which are 10 by 12, are actually what fit in a five by seven hoop. So it's very nice, especially if there's one product that you are doing over and over and over to have the pre-cut sheets, time is money, and to not have to cut it each time, this is really helpful. This particular one comes in a, a pack of 500, so I keep these underneath my machine. I also actually, going back, the no-show poly mesh, they have pre-cut sheets as well, and I generally keep those for the size shirts that I do, because I generally do about an 8 by 9 or a nine by nine hoop for those. So I have pre-cut 12 by 12 sheets and they come in so handy. So tear away is used for a lot of items. It's used specifically for items where you do not want to have anything remaining when you're done. So things that are not clothing items specifically, things that you're gonna see the backside of, things you can see through and you don't wanna have that stabilization showing. You're gonna use it on a lot of items. And I'm gonna go over some of the items that we have here in a minute and talk about the different ways that we might use different things. 
So the next thing that I use a whole lot is going to be a sticky stabilizer. So again, there's lots of different ways that sticky stabilizers can come and there's actually a lot of different thicknesses that sticky stabilizers can be in. You're really going to want to just trial out some different types, different um, companies and different um, brands so that you can find the one that works best for you. And I'll let you know, there might be more than one that you want to keep in your shop depending on different products that you do. You might find a light, simple, thin tearaway is great for certain projects, but for others you might need a strong, sturdier type of tearaway. And there are different degrees of thickness and you can just look, you know, look those up to see which would work best for items and honestly just trial and figure out which one would work best for you. But there are, again, lots of different ways that you can buy the sticky stabilizer. You can buy it on rolls of different sizes. You can buy it in packs. Whatever works best for what you're working on. But sticky stabilizer is great because it actually gives an extra added stabilization onto the machine. It really does hold that item in place. doesn't allow it to move as much. But you just have to be careful and make sure that it's not an item that's going to either pull when you're done and, and removing it or um, leave a sticky residue on certain type of um, items. So that, that could be your deciding factor between using tearaway or the sticky. Because sticky is a tearaway. You do remove it when you're done. So that can kind of help you determine which one would be best for you. So another one is water soluble stabilizer. And again, there's different degrees of this as well. People will use this for different reasons. So for some, it's a topper and for some, it's a stabilizer. So I've got two different kinds that I have right here. This water soluble stabilizer is actually what I would put on top when I am stitching an item that has any kind of weave to it. So such as a towel or this um, blanket or the minky, anything that is not flat, anything that has any kind of grooves in it, you're going to want to use on top a water soluble stabilizer. What that will allow your item as it's stitching, the stitches to not get lost in the fabric that you're stitching. So you can see why that would be important when you're doing towels or heavy blankets or a fleece or anything that has any kind of texture to it. Again, when you're using it in this way, you're using it on top of your item and it's, it's to prevent the stitches to get lost in the thickness of your items or the texture of the items. So that is definitely something you're going to want to have on hand if these are the type of items that you might be working on in your shop. Another way to use it, this is another non-woven water soluble. This is what people will use when they want to do freestanding lace. This one is marketed just for that. So you would actually hoop this and then you would stitch your freestanding lace design on top and then this will dissolve after the project is done with a little bit, a little spray of water and it will leave behind the most beautiful freestanding lace projects that you can find. So you can see how that's a different way of using it. One is as a topper and one is as a stabilizer when you're doing items that are very delicate such as freestanding lace. So two good ways to use it. So we've talked about the no-show poly mesh. We've talked about the um, tearaway in both forms of just regular tearaway and sticky, te sticky tearaway. And then we've talked about the um, water soluble stabilizer that you can either use as a topper or that you can use as a stabilizer for delicate items. The last thing is not so much a stabilizer, but it is something that helps your projects when you're done. I've actually got two different products that aren't considered stabilizers, but I think are key to have in your shop. And the first one is called Tender Touch. Tender Touch is what we put on the back of items to prevent these stitches from being scratchy. So the, the main use that people will use Tender Touch Cloud Cover, there's lots of different ways that people will name these in different um, with different companies is used on children's clothing or really any clothing for that matter and it's a way to iron on the back side you would actually place a piece of the tender touch over the design and you would iron it on the back and that's going to prevent all the itchiness and scratchiness of these threads on the inside from bothering someone's skin so tender touch is a great thing specifically if you do clothing and you work with kids items so Tender Touch, I still consider that one of my top five to have on hand. Now the very last thing that I was going to talk about is Heat and Bond Light. Heat and Bond Light is what we put on the back of 
fabric when we are doing applique work. So again, it's not a stabilizer, but it's something that can really help your project stand out and really look more professional. So Heat and Bond Light is literally taken, cut to size to your applique pieces and ironed on the back and it's gonna prevent the fraying while you're doing your cutting of your applique work and really just come out with a much more crisp, beautiful pro project. So again, let's kind of review. We've talked about no-show poly mesh, which is a cutaway. We've talked about regular tearaway. We've talked about a sticky tearaway. We have talked about a water soluble stabilizer. We have talked about tender touch backing and we've talked about heat and bond light for applique fabric. All of those things I will tell you are crucial to have for different projects that you're gonna work on in your studio, in your shop, in your hobby time. Okay, so now here's some fun things we're gonna do. I have pulled a lot of different items that I sell in my shop and we're gonna go item by item and talk about what I would use as far as stabilizer for each individual item. Now you do have to learn in the world of embroidery that what I do might not be what the next person does. But these are just my suggestions and how I would handle these items if I was embroidering them today. And as we go along, see if you can try to determine which one you would use and why. All right, so let's just start from the top and I'm gonna work my way down this pile. I'm gonna put them over here after we talk about them and then we're gonna talk about some hooping techniques. Yay! Okay, so the first thing I have here is hats. People love doing hats. People are intimidated by doing hats. But what is great, there are structured and unstructured hats. There are hoops that are made for flatbed machines, single needles, multi needles, and cap drivers, which are like big time official, you know, where the hat is perfectly positioned on there. What is great about this, we're gonna use a tear away on hats, but they actually make stabilizer that is the exact size for the inside of a hat. So that is really nice if you're using a cap driver on a multi-needle machine that there is pre-cut to size the tear away that you would use on the inside of a hat. So tear away for a hat. Okay, the next, we already kind of talked about this a little bit, but I've got this fluffy blanket. So it's got minky on one side and just, oh, the softest, fuzziest other side for a baby. So super cute, I love these, they're super thick. So with an item like this, we do know that we're gonna use tear away. Why? Because I don't want to have anything on the back side of this blanket when I'm done. And I don't wanna use sticky stabilizer because it will pull all the cuteness away from this soft fuzzy side if we use it. So we're gonna use a tear away. And then we are also gonna use, if you remember us talking about it, we're gonna use on top a water soluble stabilizer. That is gonna literally go on top. So we'll have on the bottom, we will hoop it or pin it with the regular tear away. And then on top to protect our stitches from sinking too much into this thick fabric, we're gonna use a water soluble stabilizer. So that's a really good one. And that's one that you'll come across a lot if you do baby items. So I wanted to show you this. This is a casserole carrier and these are super cute. I absolutely love these. I've actually made several for my own self. That's how much I love them and you know I love pink. So with an item like this, you want to definitely use a tear away because you don't want anything left on the inside because you're gonna be able to see that. Now I would not use a sticky on this item because this material right here, that sticky will just be so, it will literally be stuck to it when you're done. And just, I'm taking it, telling you by um, my own <laughs> um, experimentation with it, the sticky that I use literally left a sticky residue behind. And you don't want that, especially for a food item such as this. So just a regular tear away is exactly what you would want to use for that item. Now I love this, and I'm so sad. The supplier that I used to get these from does not carry them anymore, so I'm super sad. Luckily, I had made this one for myself as a sample, so I get to keep it forever and use it. An item like this, you are gonna need, generally, to use a multi-needle machine. And with this, I don't really necessarily see the inside of that. And it's kind of tricky to maneuver, so a sticky stabilizer will be perfect for this because you're gonna put it on your you know, fast frame if you have that, stick it inside, and it's okay if a little bit of that um, stabilizer stays on the inside. Super cute, sticky stabilizer is what I recommend. 
Okay, this is very similar to the casserole carrier. This is a seersucker lunchbox, and these are very popular. Um, I do a lot of these. Um, and again, I would you definitely want tear away because you don't want any of your stabilizer to stay behind. But you definitely don't want the sticky residue either. So with this, you're just going to want a simple tear away. You're not going to want to do any stickiness on this, even though it would be nice. You're also going to want to pin this item. And why is that? Because this fabric on the top is not connected to the fabric on the bottom. There's a little bit of um, space between it. So you want to make sure that if you are pinning it, that you do pin it so that the top fabric doesn't shift at all when you're working on it. So that's just a little side note. But with this, just regular tear away. Okay, towels. We kind of talked about this a little bit. Towels do have a texture to them. Different towels will have different um, degrees of that. Some are really loopy. But the ones that are nicer are kind of a smaller um, texture, not as many loops to them, or they're just closer together. But with this, again, we don't want to see the back side because towels, we use both sides. So we're going to want to use a tear away, but we are not going to want to use sticky because a sticky stabilizer is going to pull these threads when you're done. So we talked about it again with the fuzzy blanket. We are going to want to use a water soluble stabilizer on the top so our stitches don't get lost in this towel. This towel actually doesn't have too much loopiness or texture to it. You probably could get away if you were doing a large number of something like this. Do a test one and see. I do know because I did a bunch of these this summer that the, actually the water soluble stabilizer really wasn't necessary. And so to take away that step to test it is, is key because that saved me a lot of time and a lot of water soluble stabilizer when I had a lot of orders of these. Now, if it was a thicker um, towel that has more texture and more loopies to it, uh, where the threads are up higher, then test it and you might you know, find that having um, the water soluble stabilizer really makes the product look better when you're done. So regular tear away, water soluble stabilizer, but test it and make sure that you actually need it so you're not wasting or adding another step. Okay, I do a lot of kitchen linens and so these are super fun. I do some that are um, linen. Let's see, I think I have one right here. So this is a very fine um, linen hem stitch napkin. So these are very thin, but with these, I actually do like to use the sticky stabilizer. For one, I'm able to, after I've tested it, and again, you're gonna wanna test all these options and just see what works best with the products that you are working on. But the sticky stabilizer is what works best, a very thin sticky stabilizer. And I've used different thicknesses of those. A very thin one is perfect for this. For one, I don't want this very thin linen to shift at all on my machine. So having that extra stabilization with the stickiness is gonna hold it in place so I know I'm gonna have a beautiful stitch out in the end. So with these, a sticky stabilizer is what I prefer. And then I do make sure I go back when I'm done and pull out all of the extra stabilizer so that you're not seeing any of that, you know, from the front. Because something this thin, you wanna make sure you can't see through it to any kind of stab stabilizer left behind. So I actually do recommend for something like this to add a little bit extra stabilization, the stickiness of this sticky tear away. And I would really do the same with the regular kitchen towel. Even though this has, um, it's a little thicker and you can't see through it as much as the linen, I still prefer to use a sticky stabilizer. And you can hoop these, you can pin these, you know, however you choose to do it. But I do like to use a sticky stabilizer with those. You can, you can get away with a regular tear away as well, but I just prefer, I'm telling you what I prefer. So I do um, these beautiful linen um, pillowcases. So this is a really pretty one with a smocked detail. And here's one, I have folded it, but um, here's one that has just a beautiful monogram on it. Um, it needs some serious ironing, but this is a Swiss dot, really pretty. So these you can see all the way through, just like the other linens that I worked with. These I tend to use a tear away and I will cut a piece and put it on the inside. And we'll, once I'm done, I will pull all that tear away away. You, don't, you wanna make sure that you don't use something that's gonna stay behind because you can definitely see through this once you put the pillowcase in it. So you wanna make sure that it's clean on the backside and that you've not left any stabilizer behind. So I prefer with these to use a tear away, of course. You don't want any of the cutaway, anything like that because you'd be able to see it through this thin material. 
and you and I prefer to use on these my regular tear away because generally I'm hooping this in my you know nine by nine uh, frames. The other linens, um, not necessarily hooping those. That's why I feel like the sticky works better. So for these, I just use a regular tear away. I'm doing a lot of tear away, guys. But we haven't gotten down to some of the clothing items, so that's when I use my cutaway, my no-show poly mesh. So here's just a really sweet bib, but it, it does have terry cloth to it. So you'll see the kind of weave just like a towel. So with this, again, I would recommend doing a tear away and a water soluble stabilizer on top. Again, test it and see if that water soluble stabilizer is needed. But generally when you have that terry cloth material, um, you're gonna wanna have that so your stitches will really pop when you're done. So that's good for a bib that's terry cloth. Now here's Precious, look at this. You guys, I love these. These are little dresses for dolls, like for the 18 inch dolls. I love them. So we generally say for clothing that you're gonna use a cutaway, but you guys, this is for a doll. It's okay to use just regular tear away or a sticky stabilizer. It's not necessary to do the um, cutaway for this because it's for a doll. So I just do this, I, it, what's great about these is they open up so they are so easy to embroider. And I, have, I have, actually haven't pulled all of that out, but it just has the sticky stabilizer and when you go back behind it, you just kind of pull it out when you're done. You can take one of your quilting pins to help get some of that out when you're finished. So this is definitely just a regular tear away or a sticky tear away. These are so cute, aren't they? Oh my goodness. Okay, I've got an item that this is like a clear stadium bag. I love these. These are really good for game day use since a lot of stadiums need you have clear uh, bags to carry in. With something like this, I would definitely use a sticky stabilizer because you're not necessarily staring at the inside of that. But we will still try to you know, remove all of the stabilizer as much as you can when you're done. But a sticky stabilizer is going to be great because it's going to kind of give you that extra stabilization to hold it when you're working on it on the machine. All right, so a couple of other bags. And again, these you're not gonna see the inside. This is just like a pencil pouch and this is a wine, um, a wine tote. These, again, you're not gonna see the inside and to have that extra stabilization to keep it on the machine, I would definitely use a sticky stabilizer for both of these. Can you tell I love Searsucker? Now you're gonna do a million and zillion tote bags as long as you continue with your embroidery business. And what I choose to use with these is a sticky, um, a sticky stabilizer. But you want to make sure if you have a bag that has the um, like waterproof or water resistant inside that you're very careful and make sure that it doesn't leave a sticky residue. And if you find that it does, then the next time you do this item, then I would use just a regular tear away. But that's what I would use for our tote bags. Okay, stockings, you guys, stockings are big. And uh, these are something that you will continue to do. Um, if you have an embroidery business, people will bring these to you every year or you might sell them on your own. But stockings, um, you're definitely not gonna see the inside or the bottom of that once you flip that cuff over. So when you're working on these, a sticky stabilizer is the way to go. It's gonna really hold it in place and have really beautiful embroidery when you're done. Now, if you're doing one of those fluffy, fluffy, you know, um, <laughs> stockings, which I don't do, then you want to make sure that you do use the water soluble stabilizer. This one is very flat. There's not a lot of texture to it. But if you do one of those big poofy, just, you know, all kinds of white fluff or, or, or red satin type stuff, a water soluble stabilizer on top will really help you in the end. I don't do those. So this is the same kind of deal. This is a Halloween bucket. And you can actually see some of the stabilizer that's been left behind there. I just used a regular um, sticky stabilizer and I can keep pulling it out. This one was for my son for a sample, so I didn't pull it all out, but you can. But a sticky stabilizer on bags like this is the way to go. All right, I've got a tricky one here, you guys. So this is a Santa sack and it's got my son's name embroidered right here, that in the silver. Um, so... What would you use? Let's think about it. Well, you know what? The funny thing is with these, I found that I don't use any stabilizer. Nope, sure don't. It's a very, you know, good product as far as the um, fabric. 
And once I hoop it, I found that it's not necessary for this particular item to even have stabilizer. And it's just something you want to test out if you do a lot of a certain item and you feel like it, it could go through the process without it, then try it out. This one had zero stabilizer on it and it stitched out beautifully. So I get a lot of these things you're going to want to test and just make sure, but this is kind of a trick question. This had no stabilizer, but it was hooped. It was hooped beautifully and, you know, nice and taut. And that allowed it to have enough, um, enough fabric to work with. So no stabilizer on that one. What? All right, let's see. Oh, these are cute. These little headbands. Uh, I don't know if you can kind of see that. These are just the stretchy headbands that girls, you know, will wear maybe for spirit wear, for sports or whatnot, and to monogram these. I don't want this to move around at all because of the stretchiness of the um, fabric. So I make sure on these that I do use sticky stabilizer and just make sure I remove all of it when I'm done because I don't want this to pull as it's embroidering because then it will kind of lose its shape with the um, stretchiness. Okay, so we've got fleece jackets. These are great for, you know, nurses, really for anybody because you can put a monogram on them, but I do them with uh, like nursing logos and whatnot on them. And these are pretty thick. It's a fleece jacket. So, so with these, I do actually like to use a cutaway and there's different thicknesses of cutaways that you can use. I would use a thicker cutaway on this type of item. It's going to leave it behind, but it's going to keep the integrity of those stitches for a long time. And then I also will use water soluble stabilizer on the top because this is a, a, a really kind of thick fleece. So you want to make sure to, that all the um, stitching pops. So the water soluble stabilizer is going to make sure that it stays on top of the fabric instead of sinking in. So with this, I do actually use a thicker cutaway and then I will use a um, water soluble stabilizer on top. These are great and it's coming up season for those. All right, clothes guys. So like I said, I do a lot of children's clothing in my shop and every item such as this, I am going to be using a cutaway and all these have no show poly mesh, which is a sheer cutaway on them. And the idea behind it is you cannot see the stabilizer when you're looking at this shirt from the front. So you want to make sure if you have a, you, you, you've probably seen shirts that people might post and you'll see an exact outline of where their stabilizer has been left behind. And I just don't like that look. I think it looks more professional and I think it's more comfortable when it's not so thick, when it's a nice sheer stabilizer. And I, I just use one piece. I do not need multiple pieces, even though it is thinner. Now, if you have a really dense, dense, dense project, which you guys, I do lots of appliques. I do lots of satin stitch. I've never needed more than one piece of, of cutaway when I use it. But if you're doing something that is just like on the back of a you know shirt and has, you know, 20,000 stitches to it, then you might want to have more than one piece. But my answer, when anyone asks me that question, I use one piece of no-show poly mesh for every shirt I do, whether it's a quick stitch or a satin stitch, that they just always turn out beautifully. So all of these have that and you cannot see the stabilizer on it. So it really, it really has a beautiful finished product. Now these are items that I would want to, and this one has it already on it. The tender touch has been ironed on the back of the stitches. And I think it looks professional because one, it looks very clean, but it allows these stitches to be soft against the skin of the child that's going to wear it. Because if you've ever felt the back of any kind of embroidery, it, it can have a kind of rough feel to it. Now, once it's, you know, washed a couple of times, it generally loses any kind of, you know, roughness to it and will we'll start feeling softer. But for those first initial wears, and when you're talking about some of these items that are for holidays or seasonal or for birthdays, they're only going to have a couple wears to begin with. So to make sure that it does feel nice and soft and these are comfortable for kids and honestly for adults too. Nobody like, some people will say they only do it for children one age and, you know, certain age and below. I do it for everyone that any anytime it's going to be worn because it really does feel better. But I also think it just looks more professional to have those stitches covered. So poly mesh, cutaways, and tender touch used for these. The last little thing I have up here is this, um shower curtain and for a shower curtain i don't want to see the back side but if it's going to be up against my um 
my liner, then it really doesn't matter in the end. But I, I would use just a regular cut, I'm sorry, a regular tear away with this. And depending on the fabric of a, a shower curtain, this one's pretty thick. It's more of like a canvas type material. Definitely a tear away would be fine. But if you're talking about something that's like silky type um, shower curtain, that's, you know, real thin material, then you might want to use a um, cut away with that. So it, it remains with the shower curtain when you're done and it makes the stitches just hold up a little bit more. So those are some good examples of things that I do in my shop and how I decide on what stabilizer to use for them. You can see there's really kind of some give to what you know how you would choose to um, stabilize it but these are just my best practices that I found over time. So the very last thing I want to show you guys, I know this is a lot of information, but I hope you're enjoying kind of learning and walking through the process. You're going to hear people talk about how they hoop their items, whether they hoop, they float, they use fast frames. So I want to show you a couple of different frames and how you can use them. So this is just a regular frame, a regular hoop that comes with my baby lock machine. This is a five by seven. And I want to show you how you can use all different types of stabilizers with each different hoop. So of course I can use my cutaway with this and just hoop it in. But what I wanted to show you specifically with this is our pre-cut sheets. Remember I talked about how you can buy some that are the exact size of the hoops that you will use. Again, we've talked about time is money and just how easy and convenient this is. And if you're going to use a certain size over and over and over and over for a product that you make over and over and over and over, having these just ready where you can grab one, slap it down and hoop it is amazing. So I'm just going to show you, I literally pull this from my pile, put it right on top of my hoop, press down on my hoop there, and I'm done. How easy is that? This is if you're going to pin something and not float the product with it, but it's just so easy to be able to grab something. Now, a lot of times when I'm using a tear away or if I'm using my um, cutaway, I will use spray adhesive to help keep that item in place. Another thing that you can use are your quilting pins. So you can see this is stuck with a magnet. Um, quilting pins, you want to make sure you always have these ready and available and you will use those a ton to actually adhere your items and make sure they do stay in place. I did want to show you um, when you're doing clothing items, I almost forgot, sometimes they're tiny and I can't fit a hoop in something this small. So I might actually have to use on my smaller clothing items a fast frame. And fast frames, you can do one of two things. So a fast frame, if you're familiar with these, these are designed for your um, multi-needle machines. But a fast frame allows you to get in very small spaces. And I'm going to show you two different ways you can use a fast frame. So a fast frame, you can use sticky stabilizer. And I have my sticky stabilizer that I use on a product already on here. And you can see this is the only area that was used. So when that happens, you want to save as much stabilizer. I save little scraps and little pieces just for that. Because I'm going to peel the backing off of this stabilizer right here. You see that, see how thin it is. And then I'm gonna just place it right over that section where there was a hole in my frame. And you can see now I've got it fully covered. And so that's a great way to save on your stabilizer so that you're not continually covering the entire thing with every project that you do. And this will allow the whole area to be sticky again. And that is one way to use a fast frame. Another way, I've got these cute little clips can you see them from that far away? These cute little clips. And I've got all different colors or whatnot of these. Actually, let me bring them a little closer so you can see what I'm talking about. So here's our little clips. So if you can see that, it's just a little tiny clip. There, now you can see it. So if you feel really strongly that you wanna use a cutaway, then you can cut a piece, which I've already done here. And I'm going to take my frame, and what's so great about this is I'm going to use these clips to hold it in place. So I'm going to place it over the side and take the clips with a flat bottom on the bottom and literally just clip it into place. And I'm going to turn it onto the other side, pull it tight. 
So you do not have to use sticky stabilizer with every project that you do with fast frames. And I found, you know, certain items such as these um, smaller children's items, I still want to use a cutaway, but I need to use a fast frame because it's so small to be able to get on the inside. So I have put the flat side on the bottom and then the side that sticks up are all in the front so you can see how I've pulled it tight it's nice and tight and so now when I'm doing a small children's item that I still want to make sure has the um, cutaway on it I can literally slide it into place center it over my design and then I have my cutaway which I'll pin or I can use some spray adhesive in place so I can get into that tiny opening because sometimes it's really tricky with the smaller clothing items but again I want to ensure that I'm using the no-show poly mesh so it gives it stabilization throughout the wear of this item so that's two different ways you can use the sticky stabilizer or you can use clips to add your cutaway so you've also seen how we can hoop pre-cut sheets and how easy that is and then we also have our awesome mighty hoops which are strong magnetic hoops Ooh, look how strong they are which are amazing and these are something that if you are on the fence of I would highly 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 recommend using they really allow you to get into and hold in place stabilize things that prior to that might have been very difficult because of their thickness I generally like to hoop things versus float things because I feel like that's how machine embroidery was made. That's why hoops came with all your machines. It really does work well and hold things in place well, but some things can be tricky. So using something like this to um, hold it in place ah, is perfect. See how quick that snapped it together? You do have to um, be careful because it is very magnetic, but it really does hold items that Previously, you might not have been able to um, hoop and they come in all different sizes so this is a great one when you're doing like left chest monograms working on um, fleece jackets this is a really good one when I do polo shirts this is a really good one for that and you'll hear it whoops snap into place just like that and you can see how strong that magnet is. So that's awesome. With those, you can use both tear away or cut away, whatever your, your preference is. It's just a different way of hooping things. So the last one to show you is this ginormous hoop. My Rakoma has these humongous hoops so I can do much larger products. And what I wanted to show you with this is this is exactly why I need to buy larger rolls of some of my stabilizers. I wouldn't need a 20 inch roll for most things that I do. It would be kind of silly when you're talking about this five by five mighty hoop to have something this large I would have to cut way down in size. But when I'm doing something this large, it's nice that I can just pull this piece out and I don't have to do any kind of weird piecing together. So that's why you are gonna want different sizes of, of even the exact same stabilizer that you might be using. So you guys, I hope this was helpful. Stabilizers can be really confusing when you start machine embroidery. And even to this day, when I have a new project presented to me, I really do have to think, all right, what's gonna be the best stabilizer for this particular item? And then I have to think through what is the best way to hoop this, float this, pin this, stabilize this. All these things have to come into play when you're embroidering different products. So I hope this does help and it breaks down the ideas that there's not just one way to do something. There really are multiple ways to hoop and stabilize different items that you're working on. And I do just to suggest to try things, test things out, and learn kind of from experience what's gonna work best on the items that you do embroider most often. And another thing that I already mentioned, having different sizes, different thicknesses of the same exact stabilizers is gonna really help build up your embroidery library as well. So I hope you're having fun, happy stitching. If you have any questions, then please reach out to myself, try to answer those for you. Have a great day.